Actors Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson returned to add so much heart, honesty, joy, and sadness to the roles as Joel and Ellie respectively. Bye, Miku! It's uncomfortable and outdated. Good night, thank you for the raid. Make you feel frustratingly trapped. The artfully detailed and realized locations Ellie travels through are layered with backstory. It just feels cruel. Those clever designs are dressed with some of the most beautiful environments I've seen from the PlayStation 4 generation. This game just feels constantly punishing for no reason. While Part 2 is a thrilling adventure, Hold up, is this guy actually saying that Spongebob game is hard? I've played that game. I played that game, it's not hard. It's for little kids, man. Is this a Cubhead game journalist? I wonder if this guy is the guy that reviewed Cubhead and he couldn't get past the tutorial. It's a classic? I know, I've played it. Adventure, it still makes time for a stunning, nuanced exploration of the strength and fragility of the human spirit. Ultimately, the game winds up being an unpleasant nostalgia trip that nobody should pack their bags. I liked SpongeBob. It was a good game. It was fun. I blacked out when I heard the game's journal and didn't register what was being said. Yeah. <laughs> You're cooked? No, he's talking. It's side by side comparison of a review. They're wrong. I like SpongeBob. I like that game. Like, there were some frustrating parts of the game, but shit. That's four. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. Bam. Bam, bam, bam. Given the recent controversy about The Last of Us 2, I like that little jab too with the SpongeBob music as well. That's the music from when they're doing the ad for Krusty Krab. Unpleasant nostalgia, interesting phrase, almost oxymoronic. Yeah, it is kind of like an oxymoron. <laughs> I bet viewers assume this is a video digging on the game or its fans. Well, I actually really don't care about The Last of Us. I just Hoopla! don't really like Cinematic That's right. very much. That's right, Hoopla. With, so had very little investment in the series one way or the other. However, I predicted something like this was going to happen. Wow, this is like a fucking uh, Rotten Tomatoes. So score four, and then the meta score is 95. <laughs> the issue of the Last of Us controversy isn't fully the developer's fault or the fault of the players who were disappointed by its sequel either. At least uh -huh. not completely. This controversy hits something deeper than that, an issue the gaming industry has had for a long time now. And that is, put simply, that video game critics and the video game fanbase at large don't share the same tastes. Now, this isn't exclusive to video games. I feel like you should be able to play a game and, like, play through in its entirety, like... Let me phrase this. I feel like you have to be able to be competent at video games to be a fucking video game journalist, you know what I mean? Like, that Cuphead guy should not have been allowed to publish the video when he couldn't even clear the tutorial. Like, at least get to, like, the first two bosses or something, or, like, Elden Ring, you know, Elden Ring. Like, I would have left a bad review of Elden Ring if I didn't know how to play the game and I was getting stuck on it. I'd be like, ah, oh, this game sucks, wow. It's too hard for me, but, you know, I pushed through and I beat the game. You know? <laughs> Are you saying I can't trust game journalists who play games as much as other reviews like Quantum TV? Yes. <laughs> Maybe actually play a game to review game based? I mean, have some sort of skill or like behind it, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I think this is the wrong take. Like, it's not about different tastes. I think you're just bad at video games, question mark? Anything from movies to food has critics. That's not an actual size, is it? Maybe it is. No, no chance. No chance that's the actual size. The argument for why these people exist is that a critic is supposed to have yep, a Yep, Quantum didn't play it. ...that of the average consumer. The assumption goes that the uneducated... Erm. <laughs> Erm. ...masses don't really understand Being bad what is, is good different and what isn't. The issue is, and I have statistical data to back it up, 
In the video game medium, critics aren't more discerning than the average gamer. In fact, it's the opposite. The power the Metacritic score has on a game's success cannot be understated. Of course, there are successful games with low scores and unsuccessful games with high scores. Did my boy just com just say Destiny 2 was a good game? Oh, this is Destiny. Okay, I was. Uh, it's Destiny. I take it back. I take it back. Destiny was good. Destiny 2 was better than WoW. I'm fucking deleting your comment. Do not say that shit. Destiny 2 is not better than WoW. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> my bad. My bad. I didn't see that there was no two, okay? Relax, relax, relax. Destiny 1 is fine. I thought it was Destiny 2, and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> successful games with low scores and unsuccessful games with high scores. Yeah, Titanfall blue ass, publisher, yeah. A review score is a piece of marketing, and the higher that score goes, the easier it is to market their game. And True. it makes sense why. Yeah. Video yeah. games are expensive. Unlike, say, a movie ticket, which usually only costs about $10 a viewing, it's not the truth. You're just being an anti hero, being stupid. More to purchase. So, oh, given shit! the increased financial investment, it makes sense that while movies have a simple time for two wasn't thumbs bad, down style Erm. Game, most people aren't willing to purchase a game Erm. unless they're certain it isn't just good, but excellent. So, a non binary style of scoring system is required. But there are major issues that come from this style of system, and the result of this is developers pandering to reviewers above that of their actual fan Oh, game. Sekiro the game reviewer! Bad game! Sekiro's game bad! It's too hard! a novel idea to anyone watching this video. There are multiple stories of games getting censored or changed after a game journalist makes or tries to make a controversy over a... <laughs> and add an easy mode or how about you don't play the game you fucking troglodyte <laughs> like what are you doing dude i bashed my head into the wall in elden ring and i would argue probably secure was probably not my cup of tea i think it would be too difficult for me personally but shit man subject what people forget is that outside of free-to-play games which tend to not get review scores most games Ooh, I have the skim, by the way. Yeah, difficulty modes in a soul like? Mm -mm, wouldn't be a soul like them. Game developers have to think about game critics during nearly every step of a game's design, and their specific tastes are a big reason why the current video game market is the way it is today. Oh, Just shit! using my home country of America as an example, video game fan bases come from all cultures and interests as well as ages. Sure. If you have the culturally diverse old guard of the fighting game community, then you have more casual gamers that just play whatever is advertised to them the most. There are also- Consume. By the way, I've seen this fucking comic um, from that Junji Into, what was his name? Fucking. I'm so bad with names. I apologize. Junji Ito. Okay, yeah, it was Junji Ito. I was, I was like, what's his name? Again? Yeah, the whole comic. This shit is scary. I want. I read this at night once, and I was scared. People who only like a specific genre of game. For example, I know a lot of people that just play League of Legends or Dota and nothing else. Tastes also change based on the demographics we are looking at. Things such as age, gender, he is or so where Pokemon. you live is likely going to be a good indicator of the types of games you prefer. The diversity of the many tastes of players isn't reflected I well said in what I said. however. As I will show in a bit, journalism bias doesn't affect all games equally. Like fast-paced complex action games? Sorry, most game journalists don't. Like old 90s-style <laughs> FPS? Well, tough luck. Are you How me about on 3D there? platformers? Sorry, having to move vertically in 3D space is too he has a point. I would not, I would not review a game if it was a shooter. Like personally, if I was a game journalist, if if anybody ever put a a a, a review, a game to review for me, like a shooter, except for maybe like a super casual one, I guess. But I would not want to review it because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing and I'm not good at it. You know what I mean? If you give me a star, game journals don't like that. Review horror. <laughs> Shut up, man. 
I trust a lot of your shooter. No, man. No, man. Don't trust me. I mean, I could play a casual shooter. Like, I, like for example, Overwatch. I invested a lot of time and I, I got ranked. Like, I got like gold or plat. But that's a casual shooter, you know? Too frustrating for critics. You might just think I'm cherry picking, Ooh, but cherries. no, I'm not. After going Blade through the Dark critic Tide. versus user scores of nearly 4,000 games, there are a few clear trends I found that I would like to share, which I think begin to show us the increasing divide between- Wait, 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 what does that say? First person walking seam is green, cinematic TPS 3D platform is negative? Wait, what? Metacritic user score average? Genre? What? Wait, they gave 3D platformers bad? <laughs> Wait, they're bad at 3D platformers, so they gave them better views? Is that what this graph is telling me? Game journals can't play 3D platformers? I found that I would like to share, which I what the think fuck? can show us the increasing divide between video game fans and the video game critics, as well as starting to explain why things have gotten to where they are today. The first thing that I is did was compare the difference wild, between man. the average Metacritic score a game gets versus the same game's user score and the average difference of this by year from 1996 to 2018. Okay. The results of this is a trend that as time went on, review scores became more and more positive. Yeah, yeah, you wanna know why? Because <laughs> the average consumer looks at the fucking critic score and is like, Oh my god, yes! I I love it! Oh, I gotta buy it! I'm gonna buy the Epic Edition because uh, Metacritic and uh, Game Review and IGN said I need to do it! Yeah! That's why! Money! Yeah! Compared to what the general audience felt on a game. Starting in Look at that score! That's right! Games yeah! Good than that of user reviews. Before that year, from 1996 to 2008, every year showed reviewers criticizing games more harshly than that of mm -hmm. the average player. As you can see, after 2009, there wasn't a single year where critics reviewed games harsher than fans. Mm -hmm. This positivity bias was greatest in bigger budget games or games made by large publishers and smaller in indie games. So, am I implying <laughs> reviewers are bought off by large corporations? After all, I can't definitive definitively say that, but maybe. An average difference of seven seems crazy high. That means you're seeing twos and users are calling them nines. Yeah. Or seven out of a hundred. Uh, seven out of a hundred? No, I think it's out of ten. When you look at the user one, yeah, it's out of Why ten. Why would games made by Megacorps get higher review scores? Well, no, I don't believe this is the case. At yeah, reason reasons are 10, yeah. See, 2009 was around the point where print media was really starting to die, and online mm. game critics were starting to become the bulk of game reviews. Unlike Print Magazine, which generally shipped on a monthly basis and so had a set schedule Whoa, when the review had to be finished holy by, moly. with online reviewers releasing scores on the night of, or even before a game's released... I fucking hate that shit. What game was that? I don't know, man. Looked good, though. Looked good. I cannot believe that people do reviews, like, before the game comes out. <laughs> that shit blows my mind. Like, uh... Hi, Texas. Then what's up? Nintendo anime games like the Playboy of Young Boys. Ooh. Suddenly, getting a review, yeah, review copies, yeah. the first became extremely important to review sites since whoever released a review first is more likely to get views. While a video True. game publisher can't prevent reviewers from releasing a bad review of their game after a game is already released. I think Angry Joe, it took him like a month to play Starfield to make the video that talks about Starfield. I know it was more than three weeks. I know that for sure. Like, I feel like even though people don't like Angry Joe, I think he's just good at being honest, even if they might not like his style of like yelling and screaming and getting mad. He did multiple playthroughs of Starfield. Yeah, and you can kind of tell that he was just honestly playing the game, you know?
Is around a month? Yeah. Though they have tried, they sure can determine who gets to review a game before said game releases yeah. through the process of handing out early review copies yeah. to specific online publications. What yum, yum, yum. Is journalists tending to be nicer when reviewing big releases or games from large corporations because as long as they aren't too harsh on a game, they'll be selected next time it's time to give out early review copies. This is why early review scores of major games are almost always better than the eventual Metacritic score a game eventually gets after- After this three points, like who gives a fuck? Three points? I, I was expecting a ten, like ten points less. Is incentivized to get the first story out, consequences be damned? Yeah. Yeah, it's finally sounds, released. Yeah. So that more niche game you like made by a no-name company, it's not going to get the extra bump. So, and again, while early review copies weren't exclusive to just online websites, it became far more important once magazines started getting phased out and replaced by gaming websites. This is likely why when comparing the difference between user and critic scores of top rated games, as in games with a score of 90% or greater, from the 5 year period of 1996 to 2001 versus 2013 to 2018, we see a drastic difference in agreement. During the Reviewer bias in games rated 90 out of 105 year period. <laughs> oh my god. That is so fucking bad, dude. Look at that. This is 1996 to 2001, and this is 2013 to 2018. But this is modern, this is old. <laughs> dude, look at this shit. This is out of 100? Yes. Um, uh, IGN does out of 104 specifically game reviewers, and then the out of 10 is is the user. They do 10, and then 100 is the other one. Turn of the, the millennium, viewers. there's only a 0.5 scoring difference on average compared to a whopping average of 1.8 point difference. 1.8 mm. might not at first sound too bad, but Why that's the difference on? between a game getting a 7.2 out of 10 versus a 9 out of 10. Now, I don't think early review copies are the only issue causing this huge difference in opinion. Going back to what I said about diversity, the simple fact is that video game critics don't have the same player diversity or experience as many of the fans of the medium. Looking True. at available information sure. from the writers of gaming websites, it quickly becomes clear that the average video game critic is a male in their mid-twenties to early thirties that live in a major city on the west coast, most likely San Francisco. This <laughs> Wait, are they doxing reviewers, kind of? <laughs> not doxing! I mean, I know they're not posting their addresses, but like... They, they kind of look up their, uh, their general location. Like, oh, I'm from San Francisco, California. <laughs> Erm. <laughs> I mean, he has a bit of a point in that regard. But still, I feel like gamers, I feel like gamers kind of have, like, a hive mind in a way. Educated guests on doxing? No, I'm sure that the game journalists write on their website where what state they're from. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I was making a joke. I'm not being serious, but still. This might at first seem like a trivial bit of information. Class but problem. It's important one understanding oh, the specific bias game reviewers have. The fighting game community, for example, is much bigger in some areas of the United States than in others. It's also no secret that Texas is the holy land for Quake and Doom players. I did not know that. Is there a lot of fans of Quake and Doom in Texas? That's cool! Me like gun? I heard that? I've never heard that before. That's kind of cute though. Taking this further, these sites serve the entire English-speaking world, not just a single country. Different countries contain players with differing- Fuck yeah, Dota 2! <laughs> Wait, what is this, Mongolia? <laughs> Wait, Mongolia! <laughs> Wait, Mongolia's Dota 2! <laughs> uh, what's Canada's favorite? Oh, let me move, let me move. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll move you so you guys can see. Where am I? Oh yeah, this, there we go, this is perfect. Persona 5 is all pink? Yeah! Mexico, Indonesia, Dota 2. Yeah, that makes it, this tracks. Other, oh, there's a lot of dark ones. World of Tanks, Russia, Ukraine. 
That's Poland, right? No, Poland's there. Wait. I can't tell. It's kind of hard to see. World of Warcraft is... <laughs> what's that country? Estonia? Is that Estonia? And Peru? I think? Provides is Hungary is wow. What the fuck? Wait, Hungary is wow? No, 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 no. That's World of Tanks. Is it not? Because orange is orange, right? COD USA? I am not surprised at all in any way, shape, or form. Dota 2, that's accurate. It is. Yeah, there's two oranges. This is the World of Tanks orange, and then there's the World of Warcraft orange. Why is Italy so FIFA, man? Because Italy loves FIFA. They love football. That's Bolivia? Yeah, excuse me. I didn't mean to say Bol uh, Peru. I meant to say Bolivia. I don't know why. Hmm. League of Legends, uh, Portugal, all of these countries, all these, um, is that the larger fucking Balkan states? Wait, Call of Duty in India? Wait, Call of wait, in India they love Call of Duty? We fucking love football, I believe it. Data from like 2008, 17, it seems, yeah, this might be a little bit outdated. I'm like, world of fucking tanks, like, good lord. What is Russia's wall, right? Yeah, it's, it's world of tanks. I don't think fucking world of tanks is that popular anymore, is it? I don't know, this might be outdated, but it's still cool to look at. Tastes. If you're a developer sure. that lives in, say, the UK, for example, you're going to have your game reviewed by majorly West Coast Americans. True. This is just conjecture on my end, but could this explain why most video games these days take place mm. in America, despite video games being developed by people from all around the world? What game do you like in Pisslandia, Queen Alana? MMOs. MMOs! Well, I have a, I have a wider range of different tastes, but yes, MMOs are my favorite. Now, maybe what I said before wouldn't be so bad if video game reviewers were highly experienced players with a breadth of knowledge in the medium. If this were the case, maybe they could handle their innate biases to what games they do and don't like. Mm. But the sad fact is, is that nepotism, not knowledge of the subject matter, is often how people get hired in this industry. Given this, it makes sense that most game critics live within a stone's throw of each other. It's a I feel like it's the same as cuisine. Why would you hire someone who knows nothing about, like, Indian cooking to review an Indian restaurant? I feel like that's so stupid. I'm in mean, what's up? Like, isn't that kind of insulting in a way? I feel like if I was, like, a French cook and then, like, I had some guy that's, like, uh, I don't like the French cooking. I hate it. Why don't you cook Korean? And I'm like, uh, erm. <laughs> like, yeah, but body rice is too spicy. Yeah, exactly. That would be the experience of a new user. Winner, so what kind of review? I guess. I guess. I don't know if that's a fair analogy. We all have tongues. True, true. I just feel like maybe they should specialize and like, ah, uh, well, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right, yeah. Hmm. People hiring don't understand the content either, um, so they only care that people can make it. I mean, uh, Mickey brought up a good point that maybe you shouldn't review it if you're an expert and try to understand it from the perspective of, of a new user. Like, maybe I can go back to that restaurant analogy part and talk about, like, hey, if the, f if the food is too spicy, maybe tone it down and the Indian person is like, no, this is, like, what we should have. Like, this, is, this should be how as spicy it should be, like, normally. And the guy's like, I'm giving you a bad review because it's spicy. How many for card games? What should we give them a 2 out of 10? Yeah! I mean, again. Yeah, you know, it's really subjective. Yeah, Thai hot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Group of people that, for the most part, happen to know each other. This also explains the embarrassing lack of skill you often see from video <laughs> games.
This is such a classic. I literally couldn't believe this was a real video, by the way. This Cuphead review vo footage of that game journalist. I was fucking cry laughing. Reviewers or their preferences for easier games. Like, what Remember are you SpongeBob doing, man? At the beginning of the video? Here's that same reviewer not being able to figure out a quote unquote puzzle. Do we need a number value? Yeah! Literal children. That's actually a good point. Like I said with the whole um spicy thing. If perhaps an Indian person or a Thai person says, hey, this is like spicy for me and I say it's too spicy, is there really a wrong or a right? It's just their subjective opinion and I can just say it's spicy. Is that wrong? No. Children, not yeah. only could a child solve this puzzle, actual ocean invertebrates solve more complex puzzles. As has been shown time and time again, a lot of these people aren't fit to be the vanguards of the game. <laughs> And oh this my fucking dad, god, SpongeBob man, this hurts to watch. Only platformer to get reviewed negatively by critics. Despite this most is actually games fucking insane, higher man. Than fan reviews, 3D platformers get nearly a 0.5 reduction on average in review scores compared to user assessments. Imagine being called dumber than an octopus. <laughs> that is pretty insulting. There's a line for being a dick about it. I absolutely. Like, for example, when I was playing SpongeBob, I encountered some annoying bugs or something like really unintuitive and it pissed me off. But I wouldn't give it a bad review just because I didn't get it and I had to go look up a guy just because it was stupid. Yeah. When we take Nintendo platformers out of the picture, this raises to nearly 0.6. The final and in my game opinion, is bajank. Yeah, it's not super intuitive. Review is that honestly they what kind of didn't really get a chance game? to experience the game the <laughs> way <laughs> they were He's like, to what? Play. How do I do when it? You get a game <laughs> review, <laughs> you have a deadline. What does this mean? It means beating the Time game on the sure. difficulty, yeah. turning on cheats, or avoiding combat altogether. Because wait, turning on cheats? Do people actually cheat in game reviews to give it a review? Isn't that fucking disingenuous? Like, what? Like, I, I wouldn't trust a person who fucking reviews a cheated game. They're on autopilot? Dude. Yes and yes? Man, that's crazy! Gosh darn it, it's How is Tuesday this and I need to get this review up by tomorrow or I'm in serious trouble with my boss. So, think I'm just talking out of my hat? Reviewers admit to doing this all the time. And not just what? for The Last of Us either, pretty much for any big game. Here's one of the worst examples. In my boot camp, reviewers were charging through missions wearing the chicken hat, which makes you invisible, almost completely ignoring Mother Base and all the side ops in the race. How are you reviewing? It's like, it's like ripping apart a sandwich and then eating the fucking meat inside and being like, oh, this tastes like meat. Like, what? What? Oh my god, this hurts. They include that part in the review? No, no, this is like real cheating. It's for the end. Many, if not all, of the reviews that are already online were written by journalists who were forced to play MGS5 for eight hours every day in regimented time slots while under instructions to share only the information that was deemed necessary by Konami higher-ups. That's terrible too! I, I don't think people should be pressured like this. I'm Okay, I'll, I'll give the journalists some uh, slack. I think it's stupid that they have to do like 8-hour gaming and then like... Like, games are fucking games, man! Almost like they're just doing it for money. I mean, I wouldn't even blame... them for that they are getting paid but at the same time they're getting pressured like what friends dad got a review of copy of cog ghost and turn on god mode just so he can play story mode for a review but then you're just reviewing the story of the game not like the combat or if it's buggy if there's problems like literal paid reviews yeah like this part like Share only information that was deemed necessary by Konami higher-ups. Crazy. And when they don't go out and admit it, oftentimes it's found out anyway. If you beat a game but experience less than- Wait, what did that say? If you beat it on normal, you would have seen the entire ending sequence? <laughs> they call them 
found out anyway. If you beat a game but experience less than half of its content, or just rush through its content, do you really think you could give said game an honest review? Deadlines no. suck, but that's no excuse for rushing a review which will ultimately create an uninformed assessment of the product being reviewed. So let's put this all together. What do you get? Well, I did notice, and likely Thank others you, have Garf. too, that game reviewers tend to really reviewer. like certain types of games over others. Among the genres that showed the highest positivity bias, third-person cinematic games and walking simulators showed a 0.8 and 0.95 bump res- I, I still can't get over this. They think 3D platformers suck because you have to waste so much time, like, failing and learning the game. Like, <laughs> What? Effectively. So what are you think talking about, about? If you're a person who likely only plays video games casually and are given a Some strict deadline of I completely agree. It took me 150 hours or so. Let's say it cut off like 20 hours, so 120, 130 hours to beat Baldur's Gate. But I played the game through pretty fast, not super duper slow, not super fast either. Like at a reasonably i skipped some parts of the game but like not all of it and i did explore a lot and like finish it um it it, it does take a long time but shit platformer doesn't respect my time yeah that's a good point yeah <laughs> platformer doesn't respect my time of when you have to be and review a game what game's going to be the most enjoyable to you? Let's say you've got to get your review out by tomorrow. So you enable cheats, put the game on the easiest difficulty, avoid most content, and just rush to beat it as fast as possible. That's what so in dumb. the game can you actually honestly review? You can't give the combat or balancing a fair shake. You likely aren't an experienced enough player to understand the ins and outs of a game's combat system either. So I think when I played Elden Ring, it took me an entire stream to like figure out what to do or at least like four no 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 two streams two streams it took me two streams to get the handle of the combat without looking up anything on it at all period and not being exposed to soul likes period reason only need to give me spoilerless vague idea of the game yeah to be fair people who put hundreds of hours still don't know how to talk about balance yeah that's also true and one of those things people are hilariously bad at conceptualizing. Again, I feel like I, there was a review video that Donkey did and he talked about people who are game journalists that you can kind of almost make a bell curve on what this particular reviewer's opinion should be compared to what your own opinion should be formed from that. That's why really Ice Frog balances Dota, I suppose. Does he really? I thought like. Other people helped them at this point. Or is it just Ice Frog still? Thank god they only received the copy early though. Yeah. I recall dying for four hours straight on Soil Suit tutorial. I went into um the first boss of Elden Ring, that stupid king guy, and I bashed my head into the wall <laughs> without knowing that I was under leveled. And I was like, wow, this fucking boss is really hard. And I had no idea. And then I looked up a video. I didn't like look it up to just beat the uh, actual boss, but I did try and learn that maybe I made a few mistakes along the way, and that's okay. What's left? Well, maybe the graphics were nice, or maybe you love the story or voice acting. Maybe Tree Sentinel? No, 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 no. You. So the most enjoyable the games are gonna be the ones that deliver on these aspects. Even I admit, if I only had a weekend to play a game, I Market. probably yeah, wouldn't Market. pick the most technical fighter or some 200 IQ RTS. By the time my time is up, I wouldn't have even understood the most basic gameplay elements yet, and I definitely wouldn't have enjoyed the experience mm. much. I probably would have enjoyed a nice story-focused game more instead. You can see this in the reviews for The Last of Us 2. Despite the fact that you spend around 90% of the game in combat or sneaking or managing resources, the story, animations, and characters make a- Less than two minutes of the eight minute review actually mentioned gameplay. <laughs> Less than two minutes of the eight minute, man! I missed the tutorial in Elden Ring. I understood the tutorial, I went through it, but I did not know that you needed to be like level 10 or whatever, and I was like level 3 when I approached Market. It doesn't tell you. Yeah, he's a brutal first boss for learning, but like, I just looked at a video and I was like, oh shit, I actually needed to be a little bit higher level before I started even approaching him.
make up the vast majority of the content of these reviews. How did you get to market at level three? It was something I, I'm I don't remember, but like I, I was like level five or level eight, something low. And I accidentally walked into him and I bashed my head into him for like an hour and a half or two. Why? And it sucks, because but they're the I mean, only parts the critics got my a bad. decent taste of. Everything else is the reviewer playing the game of, guess on very little actual experience, what you think the things you're reviewing is like. If you like The Last of Us 2 or any other games reviewers also like, I'm not trying to insult you. I'm just showing that these are the types of games critics, by the very nature of the review system, are going True. to gravitate to. And because of this, these are also the types of games big name developers are also going to gravitate to as well. Because they know mm. it tends to lead to better reviews. This is almost certainly why The Last of Us 2 has the option to enable a button that literally makes your character invisible to enemies. Because combat in The Last of Us Part 2 should be accessible for all players, there are a number of options that can significantly alter the gameplay experience. For instance, the invisible while prone feature allows you to experience stealth gameplay that might otherwise be inaccessible. If you have difficulty aiming, you can give yourself more time by enabling slow motion while aiming. These features provide you with all the tools you need to make the combat experience enjoyable and challenging. What? Bro. What? No. What? Jesus Christ, man. Holy shit. Because they know this is something that a reviewer almost certainly wants and makes the playtime of the reviewer more enjoyable. This is also likely why the new Crash game is getting an unlimited lives mode in its new installment. The same Back in my day, when I played Crash Bandicoot on the PlayStation 2, we had so many lives, and if you die, you lose. The sad fact is, is that because review scores mean so much for the sales of the game, it simply becomes there should be more than one. I completely agree. There should be more than one because then you can have a bell curve of like what people are expecting and what kind of reviews that person will leave. You know what I mean? <laughs> Bye, Bookie! Thank you so much! You find lives in those games it just doesn't really matter. Yeah, I agree. I completely, I completely agree. And publisher to make the games you know reviewers aren't going to like. It stifles the diversity and creativity of the games publishers are willing to fund because they know critics have a narrow range of games they are willing to like. <laughs> this hurts gaming because it means a wide array of diverse tastes and people that play games aren't being properly catered to. It's well known that games. People preach diversity, but they can't even do it for fucking game reviews. It's fucking insane to me. Journalists tend to really care about diversity and representation, or at the very least, they say they do. But because of the bias that comes from game critics being such a homogenous group themselves, me and this guy are on the same page, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Many of the cultures that reside within gaming aren't crazy. getting the representation they really need. And that's a sense that the outside world cares about your hobby in the same way you do. Think for example of the fighting game community, a community made up in large part by poor communities that started as gatherings around arcades. Pretty How much? No. Nope. critics show an appreciation <laughs> for the here. deep and complex mechanics this genre has to show? Or what of Eastern European games? It's no secret- Oh, 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 oh! Stalker, stalker, stalker! Look, stalker! Do YouTube give up on everyone? What do you mean? What you mean, snake? Chicky bricky bricky. Secret that hands. Western games media has a bias against what many have considered Euro jank. Often, honestly, um, I feel like people don't understand how bad Euro jank is, and it's almost to the level of like um, uh, Todd Howard gaming. If you've ever played a stalker game in your life, you know exactly what sto what um, Eastern Euro jank is. Critics see these games as frustratingly unfunctional and up to snore fests, but to their fans they and can the be. that create them, their unique and creative Chicky experiences bricky. made resourcefully and out of love. And don't get me started mm -hmm. on the cultural atomic bomb that is game critics and their disdain for the expression of Japanese devs. Reviewers need to see genres on their own terms. I can't wait to eat this delicious sandwich. Mmm. No. I don't like sandwiches. Yeah, but I do. No! <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs>
the no in his mouth. With their ads, they've asked me about disabling my ad blocker all weekend. It just means that whatever ad blocker you're using right now was refreshed and that it's working again and it'll probably break again soon. I want my Japanese edgy games. Yeah, Balter, Polter needs to go uh, be his little ding dong to his edgy games. <laughs> you block Origin? Yeah, it breaks depending on your circumstances. Yeah, my Google Chrome you block is working, but my Firefox you block is not for whatever reason. So I just use Chrome for now. So rather than through the lens, they often get both from their background and the no! short amount of time they get to assess a game. A lot of these reviewers are predisposed to not liking certain food items, and I don't think that's right. I mean, they're they're the reviewer after all. They're, they're supposed to have the professional. Is that Itubs's voice? What the fuck? Wait, 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 wait. Was that Itubs's voice? Palette and be able to tell me if a tomato is crisp or not crisp, they can't just throw it off and be like, I don't review tomatoes. Oh, oh, what are you, fucking gay? I'm gay. So, what's my solution to this? Should only gaming experts like me get review copies? No, I don't think so. There are some types of games I simply don't care for, but that doesn't mean I think these games deserve a low score because of it. The exactly, I might not be into fucking FIFA, doesn't mean I'm gonna review it. Major issue of the Metacritic is that the best games aren't what are going you, to be the ones gay? that are I'm liked gay. by everyone, Gage. but instead the ones loved by the specific group of people they pander to. A piece mm. of art that speaks to you specifically is always going to be the piece of art that we personally like the most. True. As I said earlier, I don't like cinematic games. Does that mean all cinematic games deserve low scores? No. Of course not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rather than traditional Metacritic reviews, <laughs> we should transition to more accurate and personal review systems. Traditional True. game reviews are kind of obsolete in the year 2020. Mm. Most people don't even read gaming site reviews. Monty they Python just check for the score. you. Sites like YouTube allow people to broadcast detailed opinions of games, and unlike random IGN reviews, you likely know if said content creator has tastes similar to yours. But an even better review system, in my opinion, is that of the user review system. Not necessarily the user review system that Metacritic has, but the system sites like Steam have. Steam used to display the Metacritic score on a game store page. <laughs> Did they really used to do that? They must have removed that a long time ago. I don't remember this at all. <laughs> but later replaced it with user scores. But more importantly, these are from users that have already purchased and played the game. This means mm. that the reviewers have already been self-selected for being into the specific type of game or genre the product mm. is from, and likely have more expertise in it. Not only that, but unlike game journal scores, Steam review scores can update continuously, which better reflect the state of a game. Yeah, yeah, recent reviews are very positive, but all reviews mixed because in the last six years, they've improved the game. So, yeah, it works. Yeah. As time goes on, and gives players as much time as they want before reviewing a game. Sure, this might result in games that the general populace wouldn't be into getting a score far higher than what reviewers would give it, but let's be honest, if you're looking at the user review scores of a Japanese dating sim, it's because you already have Aren't an interest in, in Japanese, Japanese dating sims. <laughs> This has worked wonders yeah. for the games that the major gaming websites aren't willing to touch, or games that are in early access. Do I think Steam's Booba. user review system is perfect? No. But I do think it's a step in the right direction, and definitely a better option than what the current dogma is. And you can edit your review as well. To close, I feel there's a lot of information that can come from this data set I've been collecting and going through. As time goes wow. on, I hope to update it and make a more comprehensive list showcasing reviewer bias as it applies to genres, publishers, and developers. If nothing else, maybe it could help players determine a better assessment of a game's quality than just what gaming review sites decide. I still can't believe they gave Spongebob a fucking bad review because they couldn't do it. It is such an easy platformer. It's literally for fucking babies. I played this shit when I was a fucking kid. What the fuck? How? Nice little review, though. Good video! Very informative. Very nice! Very nice! Clap goes, clap goes in the chat, though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Controls can be touchy. No, I understand that. That's kind of like a platformer thing, but shit, like, I don't know. <laughs>
I don't know. I feel like this is not really an excuse. I understand, but at the same time. Mommy! Piss, piss, piss. Shit! Piss, 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 piss. Fuck, 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 fuck,